Uh, thank you very much for your nice introduction. Today, I'm very glad to present my work. I call it Geometric Modeling from Flat Sheet Material. So this topic is a summary of my research in the past few years. So here is the outline of my presentation. I will first introduce the background and follow with three specific research within this topic. The curve pleated structure, freeform quad based karigami, and the shape morphing mechanical meta materials. So uh, these are three basic concepts you may know origami, karigami, and uh, developer surfaces. They have a common feature is that they can all be modeled from flat sheet material. So first, let's look at uh, the origami. So origami is a Japanese word means paper folding. It's kind of very old art. I think uh, almost everybody has more or less some experience of playing paper. So here I show some examples of origami. So here are two boats, a swan and a frog. Someone could make even more complex designs such shown here. So origami has a very old history. Here is a first known book about origami, which published more than 200 years ago. But the concept and the designing idea has been widely applied in the modern technology, such as the designing of solar panels for space exploration. Here you can find NASA's design for International Space Station on the upper left and Mars rover on the upper right, and two other designs for the solar panels of a satellite below. So other than that, origami has also been used in the field of soft robotics. Here is an example from Harvard University where origami is used to simulate uh, muscle motions. The karigami is another concept. Still, a Japanese word means paper cutting. So compared with origami, the difference is besides folding, cutting is allowed in the design of karigami. This means karigami has more design of freedom for geomet geometric modeling. So the idea of karigami has also been widely applied in the field of material science and also used in the art design. So on the right is a pop-up structure. So here are two more examples of karigami. After cutting a planar sheet of material, the left structure shows new material properties and also rich variation of curvature. And the right one shows an aesthetic structure expanded from a square to a circle. So the set concept is a developer surface. Developer surface is a smooth surface with zero Gaussian curvature. It can be flattened on to a plane without any distortion, stretching, compression, or cutting. So smooth developer surface can be divided into three categories, generally saving the general cones and the tangent surface of a space curve. So flat sheet of material are the most common form of raw material. Then developer surface is widely used in the manufacturing related modeling. So it can be used in the field of architecture design and also in the manufacturing of boats, clothes, shoes, and others. So origami, karigami, and the developer surfaces are the main focus of my talk. So next, I will introduce curved pleated structure. So I consider it as an origami related and also a developer surface related work. So our work was motivated by dif discrete differential geometry and inspired by curved folding art, such as shown here, by Erica Damain and his father, Martin Damain. Now here, the curved pleated structure is kind of origami with zigzag curved folds. So in the tr traditional origami design, paper were usually folded around straight edges without stretching, tearing, or cutting. However, a flat sheet of material can also be folded around curved creases as shown here. The folded surface can be isometric mapping onto a 2D domain. The most influential early work on the design of curved 
Chris surfaces was uh, was done by David Hoffman. He discovered the geometry properties of curve folding and also create some examples of curve folding models as shown here. And using the basic theoretic insight, Eric Damain and uh, John Mitania create artwork for the design of origami with curve crazies. And Professor John Mitania even had a book called A Curve Folding Origami Design. So there are some pretty examples. So for research, Killian and his colleague used to develop a quad mesh for the reconstruction of general curve crease surfaces. So the recent work of, of uh, Rabinovich used the discrete net of orthogonal uh, geodesic to modeling uh, developer surface and also the curve folds. So here is an example of curve crease origami for the face shield design. So in our project, our contribution is a designing method for curve pleated structure. So we require the structure to approximate given reference shape. We also introduce the concept of principal pleated structure and the discrete principal pleated structure could be used as a flexible mechanism. So we modeled our curve pleated structure by special PQ mesh. So first PQ mesh or planar quadrilateral mesh have been widely used in freeform architecture. So here is one example. It's a shopping mall in Australia covered by PQ meshes. The PQ mesh with nearly rectangular panels followed the principal curvature lines. So one special case of such kind of mesh is a conic mesh. So a PQ mesh is conic if at each vortex, the, uh, the faces around, around this vortex are tangent to a right circular cone. So for conic mesh, uh, the sum of the offset angle are equal at uh, each vortex. So the geometry property of conical mesh has been explored by Pierre's work. Here we just uh, give a brief recall of such of the parts which relate to our work. So curve pleated structure consists of smooth developer surfaces, and this surface can be mapping asymmetrically onto the plane. The basic type, including um, plane and and the developer surfaces, which have had already been introduced before. So it's natural to mold the discrete developer surface as strip or planar quartz. So obviously, PQ strips can be unfolded onto the plane. And furthermore, the refinement of the PQ mesh by subdivision and keep the quartz planar produce a smooth developer surface in the limit. So if we refine a picking mesh in one direction, this can give us some developer strip models. So on the right hand side is a, a developer strip model. So usually if we unfold the developer strip model onto the plane, there are some gaps or overlaps. But one property of the pleated structure is that if we unfold this uh, curve pleated structure, there are no gaps or folds. Okay, the most important geometry property of a curve fold is that the oscillating plane here shown in red, the oscillating plane of the, the, the crease curve affects the tangent plane on either side. So this uh, two orange plane are the tangent plane on either side, they have the same angle with the oscillating plane. So a special case of co-pleated structure are the principal pleated structure. So the principal pleated structure has constant folding angles around each curve, each crease. So they can isometrically deform onto a 2D plane during the deformation the property of constant folding angle is always true. So we call such kind of 
uh, structure as principal pleated structure. So in the discrete case, a discrete pleated structure is modeled as a PQ mesh. So this PQ mesh should be asymmetric to a, a, a primer quad mesh. This means that the sum of the angles for the, the, the mesh at each vertex should be two pi. So this is the divisibility constraint. And discrete principal pretty structure a special conic mesh. So because of the divisibility constraint and also is um, the constraint of conical mesh, we will get a conclusion that the sum of the opposite angles equal to pi. Okay. So the other constraint of the discrete uh, principal pretty structure, the property of is that they always had constant folding angles and also its offset is always a discrete pleated structure. So these are some examples of uh, principal pleated uh, structure. So, okay, this is a, is a wood, this wood structure is rendered based on a, also based on a principal pleated structure. So which can be folded from a 2D structure. So if we look at the details, we can find out the structure has a constant thickness. So which is an important property of conical mesh. So the property of, of principal pretty structure also implied that it is a flexible, flexible mechanism. So this is a real model for a principal pretty structure. So this basic model can be folded continuously from its um, 2D form. So during the deformation, the constant uh, folding angle is always true. Okay, so to design and compute a pleated structure, we introduce the concept of pseudo geodesic. So here, the, the blue line is a pseudo geodesic. So a pseudo geodesic is, is a surface curve whose oscillating plane or, uh, form a constant angle with the uh, tangent plane. So here the constant angle is theta. So here, this, this is example of pseudo geodesic with constant angle theta equals pi over six. There are two special cases. One is that when the theta equals zero, then the, the pseudo geodesic curve is asymptotic curve. But when theta equals pi over two, then the pseudo geodesic curve is geodesic. So usually a uh, pseudo geodesic has a constant angle in between. The whole uh, computation pipeline, including two major parts. One is the initialization based on the pseudo geodesics. And uh, another is the optimization part. So here we show the, the in initialization. So we initial we initialize pleated structure based on pseudo geodesics. So here, this uh, red circles represent, actually represent some curves, some pseudo geodesic curves. So they, they are sampled uh, approximately equal with equal distance. And here, the red line is the oscillating plane of, the, of those uh, pseudo geodesics. And then we can offset the pseudo geodesic around the normal direction of their oscillating plane alternatively up and down. And we get an initial surface of pleated structure here showing in orange color. And uh, we assume that after the offset, the oscillating plane of the offset, off, offset uh, curve is approximately as, as the 
similar as the uh, the oscillating plane of the original uh, curve, then we will get the conclusion that this oscillating plane bisects the two tangent plane in between. So this is this kind of initialization initialization is good because it satisfies the uh, the geometric property of curve poles. So here is a case for the theta equals pi over six. So the initialization based on should geodesics can be applied in two different ways. One is uh, giving a, a space curve. We, gener we, we generate uh, the, the surface through evolution. So another way is giving a, a reference surface. We sample some geodesics on the surface. So here I show the first uh, way. So here is a given curve. We can compute its normal direction, its binomial direction, and its evolutional direction. So here, theta is the constant angle for pseudo geodesics. So here we show two different examples. One is at theta equals zero, and another one is theta equals pi over six. And then we can generate uh, the, the curves again and again to, to build up a surface. And, and those curves are the pseudo geodesic curve of the evolutional surface. And then we can generate the initialization of the oscillating of the uh, completed structure as we uh, discussed before. And this kind of initialization is a, a good initialization. So for a given reference surface, we can um, prescribe a guiding curve, and then we can sum some vertices on this curve and trace the pseudo geodesics. And then we connect this pseudo geodesics, geodesics uh, with a quad mesh. And, and similarly, we generate the curve pleated structure. And uh, to emphasize uh, the importance of initialization, here I show example of bad, a bad initialization. So this initialization is uh, generated based on a um, given quad mesh. So uh, after that, we're using this uh, kind of initialization for our computation. If we require the, the mesh, this given mesh to be uh, asymmetric to a 2D plane, then the structure, this is the result, then the structure will go far away from the reference shape. But if we require, we add the weight of the closeness, then we can never get a planar quad. So this, so here the red means the quads are not planar. So under such of um, initialization, we cannot get a very good uh, computational results. So in the optimization, we formulate the constraint as an uh, energy term. The planarity is represented by the uh, os orthogonality of the phase normal and its corresponding edges. And the developability is guaranteed by forcing each phase of the 3D quad mesh and its 2D counterpart has the same lenses and also uh, same lens of edge and also the diagonals. So we also require the vertices to be close to the initial uh, crisis. And we also add some fairness term for the curve or for, for the vertices around the curve crisis. So for principal pretty structure, we add an additional term to ensure that the folding angles around uh, each crease is constant. So for the objective op optimization, 
we form we combine those energy terms and uh, um, it can be solved by a uh, Gauss Newton or LM method. So here we show an optimized curve pleated structure around a nodal curve. And on the right hand side is uh, is physical model. And these two examples show the results of non-uniform evolution. So here it means that uh, for generating an initial uh, complete structure during the evolution, the moving speed of the vortices on the pseudo geodesics are non-uniform. So here is why you, we can find some parts is narrow and some part of the, the, the structure uh, is wider. Okay, so we also we can we also use complete structure to approximate this minimal surface, and this is is two D unfolding, and is a fake um, model. So here we show we approximate a given reference surface with different uh, prescription prescription of the guiding curve. And then we have different design of curve plated structure. Okay. The second work uh, is freeform quad based karigami. So I will shortly introduce this part. So as I mentioned before, karigami is a, a variation of uh, origami. So cutting and folding are both allowed. And pop up the design as the famous example of karigami. So here are two more such kind of, of pop-up designs. So for the research on pop-up structure, Professor Su Minghu and his team had the publication of SIGGRAPH 2010 on it. So in our project, we will focus on another type of uh, karigami. So these are two examples of foldable boxes and uh, here is its motion from an uh, open state to the to a, cl a closed box uh, state. And here is Pure's work on the design of such kind of box-like karigami structure, but they can only handle the regular case. It means that the two D pattern are regular, and the three D boxes are also regular. They can only use such kind of structure to approximate planes. So then what we want to do is to extend the approximation to freeform surface. So here's one example, closed box is used to approximate a given 3D freeform surface and the structure can be flattened onto a 2D plane with holes. And there are three types of box structure we worked on in this uh, project. So this is one we call it box karigami or type B for short. So for each phase of the reference quad, quad mesh, there is a box structure. The second one we call it checkboard box karigami or type CB for short. So here you, we, we, we can see the difference the box are distributed alternatively like a, a, a checkbox. So only one half of the face have boxes and another half are covered with primer uh, faces. And this one we call it checkboard karagami or type C for short. The only difference with the previous one is that the neighboring box are required to share the same age. So if we compare these three types, we can find out they have different holes when flattened on the plane. So type B has eight-sided holes and there are four pairs of um, equal edge lengths. And type CB has um, four side case shape with two pairs of equal uh, age lens and type C has the strongest uh, constraint 
their holes on the 2D plane are rhombus, whose edge um, has the same, same length. So the goal of our algorithm is for a given reference surface, we generate a box-like structure to cover its face and the box shape can be flattened onto the 2D plane, such that the structure can be constructed by cutting and folding a flat sheet of material. So the essential part of this project is a discrete expanding mapping. So this mapping is not a traditional one such as a conformal or asymmetrical mapping. So as shown in this figure, we call the mesh uh, connected by these red dots as uh, a base mesh. So here, the base mesh in 3D is BM and uh, the base mesh in 2D is BM bar. So mapping from BM to BM bar is kind of, uh, is, is kind of expansion. And this mapping requires the principal distortion always be greater than one. So for a given 3D shape, we, we map it onto 2D with uh, proper distortion control. And uh, after the distortion has been computed, we can then design the height and the inclining angle of the boxes. Okay, this is uh, the basic idea. And this uh, design then can be used as initial input for further global optimization with the constraint of the asymmetry. So in the global optimization, and, uh, the, the corresponding phase in 3D and 2D are required to be identical. And this constraint has been uh, had already been introduced in the in the previous uh, project. So here I, I show some results. So for complex shapes, we have to cut it for mapping. For example, for this linear tower model, we map it uh, with four cars. And uh, for this model, we have to cut it into two pieces with disk topology and approximate the whole shape with two pieces of flat, flat, flat materials. So to validate our algorithm and design, we also show here some real paper models. And this one is uh, built in with another material. So one side is uh, wood and another side is a uh, feather-like uh, material. This is a three by three model, although simple, if we can see this three by three model as a basic element, actually this, this element can be repeat and they rotate 90 degree and they connect with each other to form a bigger structure, which could be used uh, as a roof design. So another work I think is quite interesting is the curved karigami. So similar as curved origami, the cutting lines are not straight. So as, as far as I know, there is almost no such kind of design before. So what we did is using the idea of subdivision. So we have the design, we have the design of um, box karigami. Then we can subdivide the 2D pattern and also the 3D shape. And then we apply and, and this, the subdivision could be used, could be a very good initialization. And then the further optimization with isometric constraint could help us find the curved karagami design with very high accuracy. So here is the uh, real model for a curved karagami design. Okay, so the third project uh, exploit shape morphing mechanical metamaterial. I can see that this work also as a karigami related work. So a typical feature of metamaterial is their ascetic behavior. So as shown here, this is an example of ascetic structure. Uh, it's a physical model we, we made with a, a primer sheet of material. 
So the model has two states, closed state in 2D and open state in 3D. So one goal of our work is to design the cutting lines in 2D such that the open state can approximate certain given reference shape. So a inverse problem is that the open state is in 2D and the closed state is in 3D. So here is also a physical model we built for such a purpose. The more general goal is that the open state and the closed state are both in 3D. So there are some previous work on aesthetic structure, such as this one by uh, Professor Mark Foley and his team. They used the triangle mesh for the aesthetic design, and they compute an initialization use, using conformal mapping. And this is another work used uh, use the quad mesh as is basic designing elements, which published in natural material. So here is a 2D design in which the closed state is a square and its open state is a circle. Um, and these are their results used to approximate 3D shapes. But if you look at the fairness of this result, they are not good. So for the design of quad-based metamaterial, we propose a new mapping called constant mean stretching. So here I, I will use a simple example to explain this concept. So this is a basic two by two uh, regular quads in a closed state. So the red, the red dots are the barycenters of those quads. And the lengths and whites of uh, every quad are A and B, and the quads connected by the barycenter have the same length and width. So when the structure opened extremely, we can do the same thing by connecting the barycenters. So the quad connected by the barycenter is a square with edge length W. So it's not difficult to find the relation between A, B, and W. So here is the, the relations. So we, we define the stretch on the horizontal direction as a ratio of A and W, and uh, define the stretch on the uh, vertical direction as B and W. So here lambda one and lambda two are the, are the two stretches. Then we will get uh, the conclusion that uh, the sum of these two stretch or the mean value of these two stretch is constant value. So this is the a constraint we used in the design of structure deformation from a closed to a open state. It's quite simple. So here is an example. The left one is the reference is the reference of the closed state. And the right one is the reference surface for the open states. So in the middle, there are two grays. They satisfy the constraint of mean, constant mean stretching. Okay, so first we map these two grays to uh, the reference surface. And then we further optimize the, the, the mapped uh, quad mesh. So we use the we use the control mesh. So here the red one are the control mesh. We use the control mesh as our computational mesh to control the, to, to implement the constant mean stretching. And when we got the uh, uh, good control mesh, we can derive the original quad mesh and then apply the global optimization of cons of isometry. So the final result is, uh, is shown on the top. Here are some more results. So here in this example, the, uh, the closed uh, shape is in 2D and uh, is opened in 3D. Similar, this is the same. In this example, the closed state is in 3D and opened 
on, on a 2D plane. This is another such kind of examples. So we can also, so this example is that closed state and open state are both in 3D, but uh, with different reference surfaces. So here we we use such kind of structure to approximate um, a complex shape such as a linear tower. So the closed state is in two D. So for for such kind of um, reference surface, we can also get the results such that the the closed state is in three D. So here we show more examples of the orthotic structure based on some spherical uh, meshes. So here we show different uh, closed mesh, and then we got different uh, expanded orthotic structure. Okay. So Another part of this project is the bistable structure. Here's a video show this concept. So the structure has two stable states, opened and closed. The purest work can only handle the case of regular reputation, uh, regular patterns, such as shown here. Okay, so here's the figure show the basic element of our bistable orthotics. So the left one is the, is the closed state and the right one is open state. So if we look at the two different colors, the yellow one has a rotation and the blue ones has only translation. So here we show the relation between the two stretches and in the internal design of the rectangles uh, in the middle, such as their width, length, and angles. So in the initialization of bistable aesthetics, we use the relation of those geometric properties that I will not explain the details here. So in our project, we extend the previous work or regular design of general to general designs. So here, uh, some um, 2D examples. And this is the open state, the bistable uh, orthotic structure. And this is their physical model. And also we have some other uh, results, the closed state, open state, closed state and open state. We also tried to design 3D bistable structure. So in the design of 3D bistable, the, uh, the direction of the rotation axis between these basic elements are very important. So here we show two examples. If we look at the, the 2D patterns, they are quite similar. But the, sorry, the difference is their rotation axis on the uh, on the thickness uh, direction. So for this uh, example, we, we also build the physical model. Here you can find the animation and those two, the open states of these two structure are uh, used to approximate uh, a positive surface on the left and a, a negative curvature surface on the right hand side. And these are the photos of well, the physics model. Okay, so for the future work, we would like to explore more ways design patterns or should a geodesics for initialization of curved plated structure. Our current uh, way is uh, prescribe the guiding curve randomly, but I think there are some better ways to do this so we, we are also interested in the reconstruction with curved folded um, structure that not, that's not completed structure. So we also would like to investigate multi-stable 
uh, osetic structures. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the nice talk and covering your know, different aspects of your work uh, about uh, these uh, you know, geometry design. Any questions from the audience? Okay, I have a quick question. Uh, you know, talking about some of these uh, cases like a uh, uh, principal pleated uh, structure design, um, you know, it looks to me that you're, you can formulate these as uh, like soft constraints in the energy terms. Um, are these sort of, uh, you know, how accurate are these satisfied in the, in the final design? You know, it looks like they, they are they are fine, but uh, are there any any sort of, are there any errors that could cause any any problems? Yes, you, you're right. The for those for these optimizations, actually, there because there are some of the terms you can never the, the the energy can never go down to zero, such as the fairness term. So, I mean the the the, the total energy will never go to zero, but uh, uh, it's, it's a reasonable, reasonably well because um, we have some ways to measure the, the, such as, for example, such as a planarity of the, the phase. Uh, for example, if uh, in, the, in the engineering, in the real construction of a structure, if the average length of the a quad is one, is one meter, and then uh, then we can measure the the distance between the diagonals. If the diagonal the distance between two uh, diagonals is um, smaller than certain threshold, then we we consider it as a um, prior phase. So I mean it's it's not it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not zero, but uh, it's reasonable well. Thank you. Yeah, and other side, uh, um, just uh, um, yeah. So you, you obviously you can you can design uh, you know between different uh, in reference surfaces. Any restrictions about what kind of reference surfaces can can be done, or you know can they be very complicated, or you know can we uh, need to be uh, set? We need to satisfy certain. Do we need to satisfy certain constraints? I think this is is quite is is uh is quite a difficult problem. Um, the I mean, for manufacturing, I think the purpose is quite different because if we look at the linear tower, we say such kind of example is complex for architecture. But if, yeah. but in the in the in the field of uh, animation or other field of computer graphics, this this shape is it's not it's not that complex, right? So yeah, I mean, so it's all different depending on the applications, right? So if you yes, want to yes. you know, use a tool yes. as an uh, effective yes. way for architecture design, you know, these are you know, genuinely difficult or structures. Yes, so, especially if you want to use a single paper or primer sheet of material to approximate some, some shape, there are definitely some limitation, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a question, it's a, it's a is a question. Is a very good question that uh, what kind of shape can be approximate? But I think it's, it's quite is is actually a very difficult one. Yeah, but I think I think we do, you know we all need to put, in, uh, put these into context, right? So if you're in yeah yeah you're applications, right. uh, yes. you know, is that is that that kind of architecture or you know these sort of, uh, uh, aspects? You know, you know the shapes are generally difficult to to to, to achieve, especially using traditional methods. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, any, any last minute question from the audience? Okay. Um, yeah. If you don't have more questions, uh, I think I would like to uh, you know, thank all the speakers and, and thank all the audience to join uh, the session today. I okay, hope you all enjoy the, this webinar.